All right, everyone. So I recently read the book Ring World, and I did a video with Deb over at Omnivorous Reader, and we did a review and discussion of the book. We both really loved it, but I was really interested in the size and the scale of this actual ring world that Larry Niven envisioned in this in this novel. And it's so large that it's it's really hard to fathom the size and scale of this thing. So I work for an engineering company. I'm pretty good with computer-aided drafting software. And so I ended up 3D modeling this thing down to scale. Um, I used a lot of the information that was given in the book about the dimensions. I'll kind of, in the beginning, I'll show that some of my base calculations or dimensions that I used. And then I'm also going to show some of the, the cover art that have been on some of these books throughout the year and kind of discuss whether or not they seem accurate to the scale that, I, that is given. And then I have a 2D drawing that I'm going to show you that, that kind of gives some insight into a couple portions of the ring. And then at the end of the video, we'll go ahead and open up the 3D model and kind of fly through it and show you what it looks like. So let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so these are the numbers I used. Here we have the ring world. We have it in miles and in kilometers because I know everybody doesn't use miles. Uh, we have the radius here, the diameter, which is just double the radius, of course, the circumference of the ring, the width, which is, you know, a million miles. This is the part that was really hard to fathom. The height of the walls at a thousand miles high. And then here's some information here. We have the diameter of our sun. And in the book, it was mentioned that the the star that the ring um, revolves around is slightly smaller than ours. So I went with 800,000 miles in diameter. And then just to note, Earth is about 8,000. I kind of did some rounding here. And then another thing I needed was the shadow squares. And there's 20 of them. And they're a million miles wide. They're 2.5 million miles in length and this is their orbital radius from the center of the star that the ring world um, rotates around. So these are the base numbers I used for for all of my work here. So here's a more modern book cover of ring world and you can see some mountains and bodies of water on the surface here. You can see parts of the surface of the the ring being shadowed by the shadow squares, but this is just not really accurate at all. These squares are way too close to the ring and you can't even really see the sun. So I would say this is not a very good accurate depiction of the ring world. Okay, so here's a more classic cover and the bottom of this looks really mechanical and, and chunked up. I'm not sure that's really accurate compared to what the book described. We don't really see any shadow squares here. Um, the scale of this might be a little bit better. It might still be a little small. And then there's an obvious issue here with some of the depiction. It looks like, like we're seeing this in a profile instead of looking right down on it. So that just seems odd for this cover. So this is the last cover art that I'm gonna go over. And this painting shows up on a couple different editions of Ring World. And as you can see here, the ring looks enormous and there's some cosmic stuff happening on the bottom side of it, which I'm not sure is completely accurate. But you can see we have the sun here, we have the shadow squares. This looks like the best actual scaled image of the ring that I've seen on any of the cover art. So I would give this one the, the check mark of approval. So now we're looking at like a 2D cross section of the ring. And the ring is a million miles wide and the walls on each side are only a thousand miles high. So that's a 1000 to one difference or scale here from the width to the height of the walls. 
And as you can see here at this distance, you almost can't even see the walls. But if you zoom in here, this, this is the scale of the walls. So they are barely visible. And when I was 3D modeling this, they, they basically didn't even register. And so when we get to the 3D model, I just left these off and it doesn't even really factor in because they're so small. Now the ring is spinning so fast, I, I believe it's 700,000 miles per second, that everything is just kept down here due to the centrifugal force. And so this top area of the ring is open to the open to space and everything is just kind of stuck to the, the bottom of the ring here um, from that force. Now, if we come down here, I have another kind of version of this with some dimensions here. You have to zoom way in to see them because the scale is so, so nutty. But I, I did a couple things here to kind of give you a little bit more scale. So here you can see this is our wall right here and it's a thousand miles high. And then this is if you placed planet Earth at the setting it at the bottom of the ring, it being 8,000 miles in diameter, this is kind of the scale of the planet Earth compared to one of the walls. And if you look in a little closer here, you have to keep zooming in. This is Mount Everest. This is the highest mountain on Earth at 5.5 miles, and it is barely even seen until you zoom way in. Now, the thing they talk about in the ring, when you're on the surface of the ring, the the walls are kind of non-existent. And this is kind of just a quick little description or kind of a rendition that I did where it would look like mountains if you were down here and you would just see this kind of mountain range come up. And there's all kinds of different relief and mountains and lakes and rivers on the, the surface of the ring. But this is kind of kind of what is described going up to the wall. So you're not just going to see a flat wall here if you were inside the ring. All right, now this is the 3D model of Ring World. This line that's shown here is just something I did here because I'll show you something in a minute. I couldn't even find planet Earth unless I had this line kind of pointing to it. And we can go ahead and turn off the lights here so it looks like we're in space. And this is the sun here, or the star that this ring world rotates around. And these are the shadow squares. And so you can back up here and look down on this thing. And this is, this is the scale of the ring. Now, if you come down like this, this is the surface of this ring is a million miles across and this is some of the hard things to even fathom when you're reading this book like i said i didn't um, model up the walls because they just don't even you can't even really see them but if you come down in here this line that i've got here what i did is i actually put in what is basically the the planet earth and it's so small compared to the scale of this thing, it takes a while to even get to it. So here we have planet Earth, and that's, that's how small it is. If it's 8,000 miles in diameter, the whole ring is a million miles, so it just looks like a blip there. And then if you look back to the ring, here we have the, the star is shaded by one of the rings. And if you were standing on the surface of the ring looking up, this might be something that you would see. And they, the, the people that live on the ring mentioned that they look up and they see an arch because they're looking at the other side of the ring, if they can even see it from this point. And if we move over, come forward a little bit, there we can start to see the sun. So these... You know, not only is the ring rotating, but these are going to be rotating the shadow squares at a different rate. And you'd eventually see the sun and you would get it for however long before it goes back behind another shadow square. 
So the the dimensions, this ring is about the the or, orbital radius of the planet Earth going around our sun. So if you look up at the sun here on the ring world, it's going to probably be about the same size as us standing on Earth looking up. So it's just all pretty interesting. I whipped this together pretty quick just to kind of check it out. And I don't know if anyone will find this very interesting, but I, I really enjoyed the book. I really enjoyed some of the descriptions of the ring, the scale and the size. And it was just a really hard thing to imagine. And so this hopefully helps some people envision it as well. So that's going to be about it for this video. It was just kind of a different thing to do. Uh, I, I whipped it together pretty quick. I didn't animate it or anything like that because that would probably have taken too much time. But hopefully it gives you the scale. Hopefully it may, maybe makes you want to go out and read the book because it was a great book. And if you've read any other science fiction books that have these large objects that are hard to fathom due to their size and their scale, Leave them down in the comments, and it might be something that I could whip up and do other videos for in the future. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.